Okay, so thank you very much, Pedro and Hitler. Uh, thank you very much, everyone, that is attending this webinar, the EIT Environment webinar. Today, I'll talk about techniques to increase the real reliability of low power wide area networks. Uh, I'm working with the University of Oulu in the Machine Type Wireless Communication Group with Hitler, and I'm also part of the, the Fireman Consortium. And so I'll start talking a little bit about what, what are the low power wide area networks, just for introducing first. Some of you that might not know. Okay, uh, we say that as LP1, it's the short for low power wide area networks. And if I would describe them in only one sentence, I would say long distance with low power consumption. So these networks, they work in very low data rates, which enables them to achieve like the longer distance, so longer, and also with low data rates, we're talking about longer transmissions. Uh, also, we are talking about a low number of base stations cover a wide area with a high number of devices. Usually they have low to no signaling. So we're talking about random access usually, which means collisions. On this kind of networks, they practically guarantee no latency. So any in applications with latency requirements, it's out of their scope. And most of these networks work on unlicensed spectrum which means you can get interference from other technologies or other networks uh, with the same technology. Some examples are Six Sigfox, LoRaWAN, and the 3GPP NBIoT. So the main question for today is like, how to increase the reliability of LP1s? Uh, I'll, I'll now talk a little bit about LoRaWAN and LoRaWAN. Uh, all of our works, in all of our works, we use it as a use case for the numerical results uh, because it was adopted, uh, it was better adopted by the, uh, by the community uh, for the, for the research community. So first, a little bit about LoRa. So LoRa is a proprietary chip sped spectrum modulation. It's owned by Semtech. It, it works on sub gigahertz, sub -gigahertz uh, bands. So we're talking about uh, ISM bands. Uh, usually it has high link budgets over 140 dBs. So this, this depends on, the, on some parameters of the technology. And the most interesting thing on this technology is their practically orthogonal spreading factors. So here, for example, if two different devices are transmitting on different spreading factors, a receiver can receive both of the, can decode both of the messages at the same time. And on top of that, we have LoRaWAN, which is uh, an open network protocol that use LoRa physical layer. So uh, this network it works on a star of star topology. So we have one, like few, few base stations or only one base station serving a huge number of devices that only communicate to the base station and the base station communicates to the network server. And as a Mac layer, we have a LoRa combine it with the LoRa spreading factors. So devices basically will transmit whenever they need to transmit without any signaling or any, any cooperation between devices or any synchronization. So this, this is the first uh, result of our research, this work was published at the beginning of the year, I, I believe in February. Uh, and it started with, like the idea of this work started with this other work of our uh, colleague, Alionis Heller. So on his, this work, he, he discussed a little bit about antenna diversity and time diversity. So on the time diversity, which is what is important for us right now, uh, he builds upon a stochastic geometry model 
and evaluate what if the devices replicate the same message over and over uh, and, and, and I, uh, I fix a number of times to increase the rel reliability. So given that this OM here on the screen is the link outage probability with capital M total replications. For his scheme, uh, the outage probability, the total outage probability would be the link outage probability uh, elevate an M, where we have the total number of replications is the same as this M. So we're seeing here a case where one device wants to transmit one message, instead it will transmit the same message M times. So as a result of this work, uh, he states that, okay, we, whenever we have like a higher number of M, we may flow the channel. So uh, with a higher number of replications, this outage here would be uh, higher. And this number M here would be higher too. So at the beginning we have like, we, we probably increase the, decrease the outage probability, but whenever this number here in, inside the parentheses will be higher, we get like uh, worse results. So he states that, we, we, that there is uh, an optimal number of replications. So for this kind of super replications, we can, we can, we can see that as, a repetition code, and <clears throat> as you as you know from for the literature, we know that there might be better ways to to do codes uh, instead of simple repetition codes. So uh, last year we had this uh, this other work from another colleague, Samuel Montejo Sanchez, uh, where he instead of doing Simple replication, he is adding some codif coding between packets with simple XOR operations. So now instead of that very simple equation, we have this that is a little bit uh, longer. And now we have like the, the number of replications equals, uh, capital M is equals to N plus one. So this parameter N represents uh, the number of different codifications, so number of different coded packets. Uh, uh, there is a, uh, in this work, there is a, a better explanation on how to do this coding, but not go into further details. But the result of the, this work uh, says that, say that the, this codification repli uh, replication outperforms uh, the previous schemes. The, the previous schemes uh, from the previous slide for a relatively low link outage. So the main problem here is that for, uh, from our perspective from our works, we see that a uh, lower one link outage goes around 10 to 20%, which is not relatively low link outage. And we could see that for some cases, the simple repetition scheme was outperforming this coding uh, uh, scheme. So uh, with that in mind, we came with this idea of a new codification scheme, which we call hybrid scheme, because it generalizes both of previous schemes. So it, it does the same codification as CT with the parameter N, but we also, and we also use the, uh, the replication as the first, the first replication scheme I showed you with the, the parameter M. And we also added uh, another parameter we call R, which is the, the number of the, the replication of the codifications. So uh, to, to say in short words, we created a, a new replication scheme that generalizes bo both schemes and enab enable us to do a fine tuning, uh, parameter fine tuning for different networks. So with that, we have more flexibility and thus we have higher performance. So here we have like the, the equation for, for this scheme. We have here the link outage probability and now we have the number of uh, replications is M plus NR. As a result of this paper, the, the, the most interesting result we show in this figure. So here in the first curve here in black and circles, we have, uh, 
uh, uh, the, the outage probability without any replication. So here we have outage probability and here the number of users. So whenever we increase the number of users, we are the, uh, increasing the outage probability. And then here we have our the, the, the replication schemes. So the number here uh, stands for the number of replications within this this area. Here we have an opt we run an optimization to to find which were which were the, the best uh, set of parameters for each schemes. So we can see that the replication scheme, which is the, the simple one, had uh, is here in red. We can see that it doesn't have like uh, it, it increased the performance uh, with no replication, but we can see that the code is scheme here in green outperformed the, the, the red one, the rep simple replication with fewer replications. Then in blue, we have our proposed scheme, which outperforms the coded scheme. However, it uses more replication. So we're spending more energy and this might not be fair to compare. So finally we have here in, in pink or purple. Uh, we, we have this, our same proposed scheme but we are constraining the number of replications to the CT schemes. So we are using the same number of replication as CT, but with, which, with our new scheme. And we can say, you can see that it outperforms the previous scheme for our cases. Then uh, in the middle of this year, we had this, this paper published, which is, which works with the same, we, we, we work with the same framework, but now we are, accounting using like what, what if we could do a, a decoding of superposed signals in Lure, in Lure. So we start this work thinking of the Lura capture effect, which is basically, so if the SIR is higher than the, the gamma threshold, we can decode the strongest, the, the, the strongest signal in the presence of any interference. So these this happens in Lura, like without anything. So what if uh, we could apply success, success interference cancellation on Lura gateway or Lura receiver? So now what we are going to do? First we try, like, whenever we have a collision between two, 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 two packets, the receiver try to decode the stronger packet as usual. After that, it will try to remove the contribution from the strongest packet to the received signal and then try to decode the weaker packet. And for this case, we're focused only on cases with two packet collisions for simplicity and because it's more practical since we have no synchronization between devices. So it's pretty hard uh, to devices to adapt uh, the power to transmit in order to have a better, uh, an easier seek at the receiver. So we're focused only on two packet collisions. Uh, what we have here, so this is the SIR regions of interest uh, in order to, to, to have a, success, a successful uh, reception. So this blue area is the traditional one. So our SIR is above the gamma threshold. So we can decode the packet, but now we are exploiting this green area. So what if the SIR is below the negative, negative uh, gamma? and we have only two packet colliding. So we can also exploit this region. Uh, from, this, from this figure, we can see that whenever this gamma is, is, uh, is bigger, uh, we have like a, a smaller effect of this, of our proposed scheme because this green area will be lower. But whenever this gamma is very low, we have like, we, we might have a better, better result from this scheme. And this is the most interesting figure from this paper. So on the left, we, are, we, we have the success probability and the average network usage. So this is, we can translate this to the number of users or the uh, device's activity. So in the blue curve, we have our traditional framework without a lot of framework without any, uh, without, uh, in a, a seek or like like just the raw framework, the raw, raw Lora, Lora link. And in black, we have our proposed scheme with seek. And we can see that, uh, he, oh, sorry, here we have, uh, we fixed the threshold gamma in one dB. 
and we are varying the, the network usage. So we can see that whenever we increase the network uh, usage, the probability goes down, of course, because we're having more transmissions or more devices, but we still have like a, a, a big gap between the probability with, with and without SIG. And on this red dotted line, we can see th this is the probability of have like, given that we have a collision, we have collision with only, between only two devices. So you can see that even with very high average network usage, we still have a high probability that having only two uh, device colliding. So two packets colliding. So our previous assumption, it's pretty good. And on the right figure, uh, it's the same thing, but now we, instead of uh, varying the network usage, we are fixing in one. So it's on this point, but now we are varying the SIR threshold. Uh, as we, as I stated before, whenever we increase the SIR threshold, the gap between the seek and without seek will decrease. So this, this is the the contribution from my my doctoral my my my, uh, my doc doctoral studies for, uh, at the moment. I started last year, and we have these two published works. So the contributions basically are, we have now a flexible replication scheme suitable not only for lower one. Uh, and what I mean by flexible is that we, we can adapt it uh, for different network uh, uh, configurations or setups. We had a gain in reliability, which can also be translated as number of users if we fix the reliability or in the energy consumptions if we fix reliability and the number of users. We can also do our, this replication scheme at the application layer, which, we, which might be easy to, to apply in case in, in deployed networks. And for the last uh, work, we have like the seek in, at the reception. So we, we don't have to apply seek in the devices, but only on, on gateways. So we have a uh, kind of limited complexity. And that's all. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions. Thank you, Jean. So I think there is a, a question from Leonis. So I think you can you can read it, right? Yeah. Then I have just... I have a question myself later. If you have time, you can ask. Okay. Let's see. Hello, Jean. Nice words. Can you comment a bit more about latency in the hybrid coding work? Also, have you considered retransmissions in the SIG study as well? I mean, the packets that are not recovered are retransmitted. Okay, thank you, Leonis, for the, for the questions. So, in case of latency, this is an ongoing work uh, that might be out soon. Uh, we don't. We 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 didn't uh, publish anything regarding, but we we uh, <clears throat> we develop uh, some equations to to work in the latency, and we see that like uh, like the the the, hybrid, the 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 coding schemes, of course, they increase the latency usually because we have to wait until. And next packets from uh, to arrive to 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 get like the to to decode the previous packet. So the simple replication schemes so far is the one that has the better uh, that is best for latency. And the second question is uh, if I consider retransmission the seek. So this is another ongoing work. Uh, we are uh, we we start we are now considering retransmissions uh, with like uh, together with seek, but now we're not uh, as, as we are not considering on this way. We're considering what if packets can transmit together uh, packets uh, can can transmit two messages at the same time, and then the gateway can apply seek to recover both of these messages. Okay, so. I have I have my question now, Jen. So yeah, you, sure. you are too quick, so I need to ask a nice question. So uh, may, maybe maybe miss or or maybe maybe not, uh, because we're like I talk about energy efficiency and energy consumption in general, not only efficiency. Uh, your replication scheme 
uh, I uh, will have a power constraint in the sense that when you're doing a replication scheme, you are consuming more power because you're transmitting more. I am correct or, or not? Because then I think like I, like I in, in this type of uh, spectral efficiency, but if you look at energy efficiency, yeah, you improve your, your, your outage, but you are losing something. And this losing something would be you are uh, uh, using more power and, and use more the, the resources and the, the radio resources. So my question is, have you thought about it? I, like a, either like a using like as, as uh, uh, usually doing information theory, put a power constraint. So you have a fixed amount of power and then you have the option of put full power in one transmission or use the replication like a dividing tree or whatever, some kind of power, power uh, 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 allocation or you just like, a, you don't consider and you consider that to have, uh, uh, you are a kind of unfair. So you are using more power and therefore you are improving the communication and not looking at the energy, at least not, not now. Okay, so let me, let just me say what we did on our first work and this might answer your question. So like for the for the replication schemes that the, the, the where we, that the, the figure we compare them, uh, we consider that whenever we are using two, for example, two uh, replications, we are dividing the the transmission power between between them. So we're using half of the transmission power. But the the thing the thing this is not and like this is not fair enough because. We, we, we have like we might waste energy in other uh, and not, not only in the, the, the transmission power because that's not the, the only way to waste energy when transmitting. But we also did, uh, there, there's a small section on, in this paper where we propose uh, a modification in lower one for, uh, whenever we want to use these schemes and save a little bit of power because uh, like whenever, whenever we're talking about loader, uh, whenever a device transmits something, it opens a, a reception window to receive an, an acknowledgement, for example. And uh, looking at some energy consumption schemes, we saw that the uh, this act of opening the reception the window the reception window is one of the things that wastes a lot of energy. So one thing that we propose that instead of opening like one reception window for each replication uh, devices would only open only one window. Even if it replicates like seven times, it only opens one window during a given a, a given transmission. No, so that that's what we 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 work with energy consumption and uh, energy efficiency. But we didn't we didn't do any any comparison between uh, between like uh, the energy efficiency uh, between schemes? Yeah, th th this is good and, and and thank you. And maybe like uh, if in the future have the chance, maybe it would be something nice to to have a look at. Uh, yeah, definitely. Thank you. Yeah, uh, there is. I don't know if there is more questions. So can you check it? Because now I'm lost in the questions as well. Yes, they have some questions. So someone is asking if, what, uh, can you consider energy harvesting to improve the reliability? And yeah. Well, uh, energy harvesting. So if you use energy harvesting, we have more power to transmit. So yeah, of course, because uh, we, when we're looking at our models, we see that the devices on the network border are the one that suffers the most. So whenever we can, for example, have more power to transmit in devices close to the border, they might have, they, they might increase their reliability and might have an increase of the total reliability of the network. Yeah, very good. Thank you, Jean. And, and like, uh, if you have questions, you can email Jean or like, uh, uh, and then you can continue the discussion.